Foreign Secretary says he doesn't want what he calls gesture politics, supported widely in the House today, like an arms embargo, like recalling ambassadors, like requiring the withdrawal of Israeli ambassadors, because he doesn't want to isolate Israel. But he and the government were in the forefront of those isolating the elected government of Palestine, which was Hamas. They don't like to talk about it now. They like to talk about the President Abbas, who is actually now illegally occupying the presidential chair in Ramallah. They refuse to acknowledge that the Palestinian people voted for Hamas. Now, I have never been a supporter of Hamas. Like the noble and right honorable gentleman from Manchester Gorton, I was all my life a supporter of and a friend of the late President Arafat. The Israeli attitude to President Arafat and Fatah when they were in power was exactly the same as their attitude now to the Palestinian administration of Hamas. They drowned Arafat's administration in blood by a policy of assassination, settlement, wall building and economic embargo. The British government wholeheartedly supported the embargo of Gaza to punish the Palestinian people for voting for a Hamas administration. The government's double standards in this affair are so brazen that people are boiling with rage outside in the country, if not absolutely clearly in this building outside, people are furious. And the danger of radicalization of particularly the Muslim youth in this country is clear and present as a danger. The government's always looking for some cleric to refuse a visa to, or some Islamic organization to proscribe, to try and curb radicalization. How radical does the minister think British Muslims feel right now as they watch on the news right now the bombing of the Anarwa and the slaughter of children that has been adumbrated here today? Their policy of setting back extremism and radicalization has been set back by their own complacency and ineffectual uh, policy towards this, especially when compared with their militancy on subjects like Russia and Georgia. I don't have time to say all that I have to say, Mr. Deputy Speaker, but I want to say to those who were boasting today, how, I'm amazed at how many members of parliament have been in Sidorot. Did any of them, when they were there, see the ruins of the Palestinian villages on which Sidorot is built? The ethnic cleansing of the Palestinian people from Sidorot and the south of Israel? Did any of them know that the refugee camps of Gaza are filled with the people who used to live in the villages on which Sidorot is now built? This didn't start on the 27th of December. It didn't even start with respect to the uh, Honourable Lady from Milton Keynes who made a great speech in 1967 when Sidorot and other places were cleared. This started in this building when Arthur Balfour, on behalf of one people, promised a second people, the land which belonged to a third people. We are the authors of this tragedy. Everything that has flown has flown as a result of that declaration. And for that reason, if no other, the British Foreign Office needs to get its finger out and stand up and be counted alongside the British people demonstrating on the streets of London, Birmingham, Manchester, Leeds, Edinburgh, Glasgow and elsewhere. Let's see some urgency from the Minister. Action speaks louder than words. And from this government, so far, we've had no action at all.